If I haven't met you yet, my name is Aaron, and I have the honor of being the lead pastor here at Radiant Church. We're one church, seven locations, and so we know there's a lot of guests with us tonight, and we just want to say welcome. You're in the right place. You're in the right time, and I think God's got you here by divine appointment. So let's just, we're going to get right into God's Word, and then we're going to end this with the candlelight ceremony. It'll be real special, but would you mind just praying with me right now? Just close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for every person. There's not one person that's here by accident or coincidence. They didn't stumble into the building. You divinely orchestrated them to be here for this moment at this time in this hour. So I pray that you would speak to them with clarity. Let their heart be open to receive from you and let them leave in just a few minutes forever changed. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, amen, amen, amen. amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Well, welcome. This is one of my favorite things we do all year long here at Radiant Church. And so we're so glad that you're with us. We're so glad your friends are with us. And uh, really, when we think of Christmas, and we're going to look at the Christmas story in just a second, I think one word kind of describes and sums up the story, and it's this idea of disruption. Disruption. Then we have all experienced it. We've all experienced it in some shape and form over this past year. Maybe you had the ultimate plan for this year. You were in like 2022 was going to be your year and you're ready to go. Like you had 20 books you were going to read this year and you didn't get through a half of a chapter of one because something happened. Disruption happens. You had that road trip plan. We had that tra- uh, plan with our family and, and we're all excited. We got into the road trip and the vehicle broke down disruptions happen. You had it all planned out with your health and you were all excited about how you were going to be healthy this year. And then, and then that Krispy Kreme drive through come on, that, that sign called you in. It's a disruption. Disruptions happen in all shapes and forms. And that's why on Christmas, I want to talk to you tonight and I titled tonight's message, when your life is disrupted. What do you do when your life is disrupted? When you had a plan, when you had an agenda and something else happened. It it reminds me of this toy that I don't know if you ever got one of these growing up, but we had it. It's called the Jack in the Box. Come on, how many had a Jack in the Box growing up? Like these are the moments that you're just, it reminds me of life. You're just kind of waiting around and you know something's going to mess up. You know something's going to happen. You just don't you just don't know when it's going to happen. So I should have practiced this one, I guess. And, and then it pops. And there we got a little Mickey Jack in the Box right there. And then, and then, and then you kind of like, okay, I dealt with that. I dealt with that issue. Okay, I lost my job. I got it. And, and it's all going to be fine. Let's see if I can get this guy back in here. I'm working on it. Come on, guys. We should have practiced this. You should have come to the early, later services. All right, so then you go... You have moments and, and you think everything's going to be fine. So that, that relationship ended and you're on to your next one and you're, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be fine. But eventually what you understand, if you've lived life enough, that eventually something else is eventually going to pop up and you don't know when it's going to pop up. It could be today. It could be, there it goes. And it could pop up and it always disrupts our life. And when you deal with disruption, you have to figure out what's your response going to be. And I'm going to show you tonight a story of some people whose life was disrupted in the Christmas story. If you have your Bibles tonight, we're going to look at them in Luke chapter 2. We read the passage earlier, and we're going to look at these people called the shepherds. If y'all remember, the shepherds were the very first people that the angel appeared to and announced that Jesus was born. Now, shepherd is a, is a profession that is all throughout the Bible. Actually, it's the first profession mentioned in Genesis. We see a lot of the heroes of the faith were all shepherds in the scriptures. We see that God himself is referred to as a shepherd. We see the Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. We know that Jesus is described as a good shepherd. We know that the shepherd is described all throughout the Bible. And and it's something we don't really understand because we live in like Tampa Bay. And how weird would it be if you're going through Dale Mabry and you're just got your sheep just going through Dale Mabry. Like it, it wouldn't work because it's not something we're used to. So I want you to understand that in their, in their culture, this is probably one of the most common, most useful, and even a very spiritual profession to have. These, these um, shepherds we see in Luke chapter 2, the Bible says they were in fields nearby, meaning they were, they were probably close to Jerusalem, close to the temple, where, where they would actually need the sheep to what? To bring for the sacrifice. And the Bible tells us that, that these shepherds were living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. They were, they were living a normal life. They were experiencing a normal experience, going through life as normal. But in verse 9, it says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Now, pause for just a second. You read that story and you go, oh, that sounds great. How wonderful. They're sitting there and just this angel shows up. Just this experience. Everybody looks at each other. They hug each other. They get out their, their hot cocoa and they're like, wow, God's amongst us. But that's not what happened. Look what the Bible says. And they were what? Terrified. They're freaked out. The unexpected always does that in our life. It freaks us out. We get to this place where, where we go, I don't know what to do. Maybe, maybe this is a scenario where obviously God brought the disruption in their life, but there's other times that God doesn't bring it into your life. How are you going to react? How are you going to, how are you going to deal with it? Our, our normal approach is that we're terrified. We're freaked out. And if you're in a season right now where you're terrified and you're freaked out because something didn't go as planned this year, I want you to know you're in the right place. God's got your name and your story in mind tonight, because like these shepherds, there was a purpose to the disruption. So I want to show it to you tonight of what you do, what your response should be when your life is disrupted. Here's the first one I want to give it to you is that when life is disrupted, listen to God, listen to God. You can go, that's very simple, but how significant it is that many times in our life when disruptions happen, we go based off our feelings, we go based off what our friends say, we go based on what culture teaches us, and we wonder why we go from disruption to a mess. It goes disruption to disaster. Why? Because we didn't listen to the right thing. I, I know in your life that you're always having to figure out who are you listening to? I remember it was about a year ago. I had this pain um, come up in my side and I don't know, it, it bothered me. I, I, it bothered me while I was speaking. It bothered me while I was exercising. It, it was just this pain in my side. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to do what we all do. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to go to Google. Now, you might not have done this before, but I went to Google and I found out within just a couple minutes that my life was about to end in any day. <laughs> Google told me. I, I, when I went to it, I went to Google. And then while I'm even typing on my computer on Google, I'm looking down at my Pray First wristband that we all wear. And I'm sitting there going, why? Why did I go to Google instead of go to God first? Isn't it our tendency in life, when life is disrupted, when something goes wrong, we go to the world instead of go to God. Can I encourage you as you close out this year, if your life is feeling disrupted, don't run from God, run to God. Experience God, listen to God, he's got something to say. And that's what happened in our story. Look what it says in verse 10, it says, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Now, let me just pause there for a second. I did see a doctor. I'm okay. I know that's like, <laughs> forgot to say that in another service. And they're all like, people are coming to me afterwards. Like, how are you okay? <laughs> Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. Now look at the good news that the angels bring in. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to whom his favor rest. What was it, what was it saying? God was speaking in the midst of their disruption. And what is he saying to them? He's saying, listen, there's joy available for you. There's peace available for you. You might seem lost, but a Messiah has come. Can I encourage you on Christmas at Radiant? Let me tell you, you might seem like all is lost, all is not lost. God is still speaking and he wants to bring joy into your situation. He wants to bring peace into your situation. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and he can be in the midst of your situation. Can we give them some praise today, church? So here's some good news for you. Ready? God is speaking. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening? And when you're in a season where you're feeling disrupted, listen to God. I, I have some good news for you today because some people are like, I don't know how to hear from God. I know it can be confusing at, at times. Here's what I challenge the church. Ready? If you want to hear from God, you need to read the word of God. So that's why we're Bible-believing, Bible-reading people. Why? Because we need God's word. And the more you read God's word, the more you realize how his voice sounds so you can recognize it when you're going through problems. So if you've never done this, let me just tell you, because some people think it's overwhelming to read God's word. Here's my challenge for you. And I want you to put it on your calendar. I want you to put it as your New Year's resolution is I want you to make 2023 your year that you go through the Bible in a year. 
And if you've never done it before, we have a QR code that's going to pop right up there on the screen. And it's going to take you through the plan that us as a church, thousands of people across Tampa Bay, are all going to go through starting on January the 1st. So I want you to take out the phone. I want you to scan it. I want you to sign up for it. Why? Because you need to get God's word in you this year. Because I don't know the disruption that's going to happen in 2023, but I do know that God's going to speak in the midst of your disruption. He's got something to say, and you need to know how to hear his voice, and you hear it by reading God's word. Are you still with me? Church, here's the second thing. When you, when you, when you don't know, when your life is disrupted, here's the second one, is now then you look for God. You look for God. I find it interesting what happened with these shepherds. Not only did they listen to God, but look what number two, the second one, look in verse 15. It says, when the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. What did they do? They made a point to intentionally seek out God. Now, let me just challenge you right now. No matter if you've been following the Lord for five months or 50 years, there's more of God for you to experience than you've experienced. There's another level of God that you can experience and you can't just sit back. You'll never get there accidentally. You'll always get there intentionally if you make a decision. So my challenge for you is look for God in the midst of your disruption. My family and I, we were doing a puzzle over the last five days and it was kind of a very difficult puzzle. 550 pieces. It was only like a couple colors. So it was like very difficult and um, we're not really puzzle people. And so it, it was a lot of work. There was moments I had to repent to my children um, cause I just, I, I yelled a lot and it was like two nights ago. True story. I had like pushed the kids away from the table. I'm like, y'all are done with this. I'm going to finish this puzzle. <laughs> Not my proudest moment as a father, but, um, while we were finishing up the puzzle, there, there was a part, it was, it was a little baby Yoda. And you know, um, there was a part of, of, of his, of his outfit that was missing. It was, it was right in the middle of it. And so we had this thing ready, but there's one missing piece and we went on mission. We're like, we're going to find this thing. And we, I got five kids that are 10 and under. Someone took this thing. And then I got a demonic little dog that just, uh, he probably took it too. So we were looking all over the house, flipping cushion, uh, cushions over, found it underneath one of the tables. And when we found that thing, we were so excited. We had found what we were looking for. Can I encourage you? Listen, if you will take moments to intentionally search for God in the midst of your disruption, you'll find what you're looking for. You'll find God in the midst of your pain. Can we give him some praise today, church? The Bible says if we draw near to God, he will draw near to you. He'll draw near to you. So how do we do this? Let me tell you an intense way we do this. So we do it all throughout the year. We teach how to, how to do your devotional life. But one of the things, and I wanna just give you the, the date so you're ready to go. One of the things is that we take a moment in January. It's one week, seven days, where we're gonna do seven days of prayer and fasting. And if you've never started your year this way, I'm telling you, it's a game changer of how to live. It'll change your life. And, and you might go, Aaron, I'm just kind of a Christian. I mean, Christmas and Easter Chris, Christian. Let me tell you, change it this year and jump into prayer and fasting. And watch how you'll have your best year yet when it's your best year spiritually. And so if this year's not gone the way you wanted it to go, change it by putting God first this next year. And so when we do prayer and fasting, prayer connects us with God. Fasting disconnects us with the world. So there's going to be foods you eliminate or something you do or some kind of hobby you remove from your life for those seven days. And you're going to connect to God. And what you're going to do is you're going to find God in a way that you never found him before. You're going to connect with them. And I, let me just say this for some people that are really hurting and really broken. Let me just say this. God's in the midst of whatever pain you're in right now. I do not believe God causes all the disruptions in our life, but I do think that God can use them and God's in the midst of all of them. So no matter what pain you're walking into Christmas with today, I want you to know you need to look for God. The Bible says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. You feel crushed today. I want you to know God can save you in the midst of that situation. Here's the third one. You don't just simply listen to God and you don't just simply look for God. Here's the third one is that you, when your life is disrupted, you let others know. You let others know. I, I love this in the story where we see how they made a decision in verse 17. When they had seen him talking about Jesus, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child and all who heard about it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. 
I think it's so interesting. These shepherds, they didn't have a degree. They didn't go to seminary. They weren't the best preachers, but they had an experience and their experience was what was needed to change somebody else's life. Now, I don't know what you're going through right now, but I know it's not without a purpose. And I know there's somebody on the other side of it that if you lean into God, if you listen to God, if you look for God, if you let him work in that situation, eventually the pain you're in is going to be the sermon you're able to preach one day to a lost and broken world. And you're going to say, look what God did in my life. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Come on, let's give him some praise. Amen, church. One of the most uh, famous Christ Christmas songs talks about this uh, very story, and you probably know it. It says, go tell it on a mountain. And now I'm not going to sing it for you guys. I'm going to save you guys uh, that. <laughs> that is my Christmas gift for you all, all right? It says, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. It, there's something about the idea when we experience Christ, when we experience his goodness, and you've experienced this this year, you experience his grace, and if you've never experienced it, you'll only experience it tonight. I'll give you an opportunity in just a second. That our natural response when we've experienced God is to share it with the lost and broken world around you. People are hurting right now. People are lost right now. And we need to go and tell it to the world of the goodness of God. We need to live on mission. I wrote it down this way. The gospel is too good of news to keep it to ourselves. It's too good of news. So let me encourage you, as you go to Christmas dinner, as you hang out with family, maybe, just maybe, that the disruption you've been through in this last year is an opportunity for you to share with a friend and family member of how you found God in the midst of your pain and your heartache. Maybe, just maybe, God will use that mess and it'll be your life message one day. Because God is in the midst of every disruption. There's an African-Canadian composer, Nathaniel Deet, who added another verse to that famous Christmas song, Go Tell It on the Mountain, and it reads it like this. He says, if you can't sing like angels, and if you can't pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus, you can say he died for all. Can I hear an amen today, church? I want you to understand this, that when it comes to your life and the disruptions in your life, when it comes to the pain that you go through in your life, your life is gonna be summed up one day and the summary of your life will be the fact that your greatest success is not going to be what you do. It's not gonna be that 401k that you have. It's not that, that business that you build. Your greatest success is not what we do, but it's who we reach. So there's somebody, there's some person that can be encouraged by the fact that you went through that disruption and God was with you just like he was with those shepherds and he'll be with you through the rest of it. And I don't know what pain you're in right now, but I want you to know God's in the middle of it and God will use it for his glory and his honor. Can we give him some praise this Christmas? Amen. Let me pray for you right now. Lord, there's so many people that are gathered tonight that they're in, they're, they're in moments of pain, moments of heartache. And they need your peace, they need your joy, just like those shepherds did. Their life has been disrupted this year and I, they need you in the midst of all of it. So I pray that you would give them peace right now. Across all of our campuses, if that's you today, you go, Aaron, I'm just, I'm in a place I need God's peace in my life. I need God's joy in the midst of this disruption. I just want you to slip up a hand right now, just so I can see who I'm praying for tonight. So many people, so many people. Lord, you see the hands, you see the heartache, you see the loss. Lord, I pray that they would listen to you. Lord, I know you're speaking in the midst of their pain, speaking peace, speaking joy, speaking calm to the storm, speaking the fact that you're near the brokenhearted. Lord, I pray that as they enter this new year, they would intentionally look for you. Lord, to set aside time to find you in the midst of everything. And Lord, I pray that you would use their life as a testimony for your honor, for your glory. We pray for those right now across every location that don't know you. If that's you right now, I just want you to make that decision in your heart. That's the best thing you're ever going to do right now on Christmas is to say, I'm going to give Jesus my life. And I want you to pray a prayer. Why don't we all pray it out loud? But you know who you are. You're that group that says, I'm the one. I'm committing my life to Christ. I want you, as we pray this prayer, really mean it with your heart. This is your day to give your life to Christ. Let's all pray this out loud. Say, dear Jesus. Come on, say it loud. Dear Jesus, today I make a decision to give you my life. 
forgive my past. I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that believes it says, can we give God some praise for what he's done in people's lives, amen?